Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. You know, exoplanets have been in the news a lot with all the new discoveries with the TESS mission and the Forbidden Planet and the James Webb Telescope that has seen some of this. But this week we're talking with Dr. Rora Kessley about the atmospheres of these exoplanets. Here's our interview. Now that that planet's been found, what can, else can y'all learn about that planet with the James Webb Telescope? Yeah, so actually my um, personal research interests are mostly um, once these planets are found, uh, to look at them in more detail and really characterize them. And so this is what I'm most excited about with the James Webb Space Telescope. So um, the way that we characterize the planets with this telescope is kind of in a similar way that we find planets. So we wait for the planet to pass in front of the star and some of the light from the uh, star is blocked by the planet. Now to look at the atmosphere, we can actually um, do the same thing, wait for the planet to pass in front of the star and some of the light from the star will actually filter through the atmosphere of the planet and um, different um, molecules like water or methane or carbon dioxide absorb light at different wavelengths. So in Earth's atmosphere, we have ozone and ozone is famous for absorbing a lot of UV light. And so if we see that there's um, not much UV light that's making it through the planet's atmosphere, but a lot of visible light, we might say, oh, there's ozone in this planet's atmosphere. And so the James Webb Space Telescope is going to be really, really good. It's the best instrument we've ever had for doing this type of science. And so we've never really been able to look at the atmospheres of a lot of planets. And with James Webb Space Telescope, we're gonna be able to do this for the first time. The first one that James Webb looked at was just here recently, earlier this year. But how far away are these planets that you're trying to tell about their atmosphere? Yeah, these are tens of light years away. So we've discovered planets that are really far away. Um, you know, on the other side of the galaxy. But in order to see what's in these planets' atmospheres, we have to go with the semi-close uh, planets and um, semi close here is still tens of light years. Um, and so they're still really, really far away. But on the, you know, solar neighborhood grand scheme of things, they're in our neighborhood ish. When you're you're studying these and like I said, it goes in front of the star. So you get the, the dip and then you're able to measure. Explain how long y'all have to wait till you get another chance to, to see anything about that planet. Most of the planets that we've looked at the atmosphere so far are going to be big planets because they have larger atmospheres and make bigger signatures and they're going to be orbiting their star with a really short orbital period. So I think um, a lot of the results that have come out so far with the James Webb Space Telescope, these planets are orbiting their star every one to five days. So a year on these planets is one to five days. Um, so if we ever want to look at the atmosphere of an Earth-like planet, we'll have to wait an entire year in between looking at observations. Um, if we need to look at the same planet in the same atmosphere twice, you have to wait a year for the planet to go around the star and pass in front of the star a second time. So we've kind of uh, started with the easiest ones and are slowly making our way towards the more difficult and challenging planets. So you're talking about the Earth-like one. The first one that got confirmed by James Webb was a rocky planet that was somewhat like Earth. What, what kind of comparisons or differences would that planet y'all found be compared to Earth-like, like we have? Yeah, so one of the, um, one of the fa my favorite things about um, looking at these Earth-like planets with James Webb Space Telescope is we're really not going to look at a true Earth analog. So Earth orbits our sun, um, and most of the rocky planets that we're going to look at with uh, the James Webb Space Telescope are going to orbit these smaller red dwarf stars. And we just, at this point with our instruments, we need to go for the most favorable conditions. So a smaller star, um, the planet is going to block more of the light, and so you get a larger signal. 
and also we're going to go for the closer in planets so these are kind of going to be exotic worlds they're not really going to be 100 percent earth-like worlds they're going to have rocky surfaces like the earth um, but they're going to get a completely different kind of light because the light from these smaller stars is redder it's cooler and um, the conditions on these planets are going to be really different. So it's Earth-like because it's rocky, um, but it's not Earth-like because the host star is going to be really different. And they're going to be much closer into their parent star. So if we were looking, say, us looking or somebody looking at our solar system, so would you know Mars and Venus, would that be considered Earth-like since they're somewhat close as well? Yeah, so they're kind of all on the same rocky planet category, but that's a great example of why it's really important to actually look at the atmospheres of these planets. Because if an alien was looking at the sun and they saw three rocky planets, Venus and Earth are almost the exact same size, and you would have no idea which planet has life on it um, just by looking at the size of the planet. You really need to look at the atmosphere and the atmospheres of Earth and Venus are completely different. Um, Venus is hot. It has lots of um, carbon dioxide gas. It doesn't have any um, biosignatures and oxygen, um, but Earth has water. It has all the signatures of life as we know it. And so that's a really um, great question um, and a great reason why looking at the atmospheres is really important instead of just looking at the size distribution of the planets. So in the ones that you've looked at with the atmospheres, is there anything that's surprised you or stuff you've learned that you didn't expect from looking at these planets? Yeah, everything has surprised us so far. <laughs> um, uh, the atmospheres of the planets that we've looked at have mostly been Jupiter-like, um, but there's been some surprises already. Um, we expected there to be methane on a lot of these planets, and so far we haven't really seen any methane, and um, we're not really exactly sure why. There's some sort of process with the light from the star interacting with the planet that doesn't seem to produce much methane in a lot of these planets. Um, I think the really exciting thing that we're going to see in the near future is the first um, spectra of rocky planets and to actually see if any atmospheres can survive on these really close in rocky planets. Um, so if they're bare rocks or if they have an atmosphere, we'll learn that soon. You were talking about Earth having water. Can you tell through the spectrum stuff if there's water or something on those planets as well? Yeah, definitely. That's um, what we're looking for. So um, we've seen water on many exoplanets so far, but we have not seen water on any rocky exoplanets yet, just because we haven't had the technology. So in a lot of large Jupiter-sized planets and even Neptune-sized planets around other stars, we've seen clear signatures of water. So water has these really beautiful absorption bands in the infrared. Um, which James Webb is perfect for detecting. And before James Webb, we haven't uh, had the instruments to look for water on planets smaller than Neptune. And this is going to be the first time that we're going to look for water on rocky planets. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. It's really cool. And like I said, cool that I mean, we're talking really about two planets that have really got the news, but this is just the tip of the iceberg of the cool stuff that y'all should be coming out with uh, here for a while. Yes, definitely. Stay tuned. I think uh, JWST is going to have lots of more splashy headlines soon. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking some time to talk with us. Thank you.